Oh, yeah, we're back here. Episode two of the not really quite sure what we're going to call it show, hockey question show. Don't have a name for it yet. Okay, every day I'm going to be answering these questions, your hockey questions. We've got a ton of emails and people that have been asking questions that we're going to have to get to. But what are we going to name this show? So I've already had some good suggestions. Uh, you know, people, the Hockey Knowledge Show, Next Level Hockey Show, a bunch of good stuff. But keep an- keep coming up with your recommendations of what you think. Uh, leave it in the comments below. What do you think we should name this show? And then hopefully sometime uh, in the next week or so, we'll come up with an official name for this show where I'm going to be answering your hockey questions on how to take your game to the next level, whether it's training, mental game, confidence, skills, parenting, coaching, whatever it may be. I'm going to help you out and give you my take on uh, how to help you with your question. So it might not always be the right answer, but it'll at least be my perspective and another perspective for you to think about when it comes to your questions on how to take your game to the next level and how to get to the next level. Okay, that's really the key is how do you get to the next level. So, um, yeah, that's what it's all about. And uh, today's question comes from a guy that wants to know how to increase his stride length and he says that uh, if he doesn't increase his stride length his coach told him that he was going to have a hard time playing at the next level okay so he wants to increase the length of his stride or his coach said that he's going to have a hard time playing at the next level so uh, we'll get to this question but right before we do i want you guys to subscribe to this channel because we're going to be um, just dropping videos and answering questions and i have a bunch of more stuff planned so uh, give us a quick subscribe so that you don't miss anything. So go do that real quick. Just hit the red subscribe button. All right. So getting on to this question, um, good question because you know we all we always want to improve our skating. I've never heard anybody say, oh, you know, he the guy uh, he's just too good of a skater. Like I'd like to put him on our team, but he just skates too good. You know, I've never heard that before. I don't know if you guys have heard that, but uh, I don't think that's ever been a problem. So you know, even if you're a good skater, skating is something that you should be working on all the time. I mean, you got NHL guys constantly working on skating. Guys that look like they can just fly, they're working on their skating because you always want to get that advantage. You always want to get that extra step. But here's what I will say. You don't have to be a great skater to play at the next level. There's guys and players and girls and whatever that are, you know, playing in the Olympics or the NHL and they're not great skaters, okay? They've learned how to maximize other parts of their game and make it work for them. Now, they're working on their skating, I guarantee you that much, but they've gotten to where they are without being great skaters. So it's because of other areas of their game that have excelled and they're really good in other areas and, you know, they've been able to do it. So... Yeah, that's uh, one thing you can do is you can just make sure you're always working on maximizing all the other parts of your game, okay? The second thing I'll say is that, um, you know, you want to work on improving what you already have. So your stride is what it is right now, but if you get stronger, faster, quicker, and more powerful, you're just going to become a better skater naturally even without improving your stride. So those first three to five steps, if they're short, choppy, and weak, you're going to be in trouble. But if they're, you know, strong and powerful three to five steps, even if they're short, then you know what? You're going to still be able to cover some ground and you're probably going to win some some loose puck races and some battles and be able to cover some time and space because fortunately hockey is a game of um, you know short bursts and, and quick areas and tight areas so you know work on getting stronger and faster and you know obviously we have our free hockey workout at freehockeyworkout.com that you can sign up for and get a free workout with videos and printable workout documents and all that I think we've got like 10,000 players that have um, taken that so far and, and I get emails all the time from players that are thanking me and they're you know telling me how much they've improved so freehockeyworkout.com and that's going to help you with the off ice training part getting stronger faster quicker and uh, maximizing and and helping just make the most out of what you do have okay so getting into the actual stride itself there's three parts to the stride there's your knee bend all right there is your stride leg and that's the leg that's going backwards all right and then your there's your drive leg and that's the leg that's coming forwards and sometimes you hear drive knee because really the drive leg is the knee that's driving forward okay so you have your knee bend your stride leg and your drive leg okay so you have to understand what those three components are and how they work together if you want to improve your stride because those are your mechanics right there okay so First and foremost is knee bend. That's the fastest way to improve your stride length. Because if you're standing up too much, your stride's gonna, you're going to be limited on how much mobility you have and how long your stride can actually go, both 
on the drive leg and the stride leg. Okay, so always be working on that knee bend and that's where the off ice stuff comes into play. So really working on improving that 90 degree muscle endurance off the ice. So a lot of those drills that we're working on off the ice have you in that 90 degree position so that you're getting more comfortable and stronger and more powerful in that 90 degree bent knee position. And that's really what it comes down to for knee bend. You can make huge improvements in your stride um, just by improving your knee bend and getting more comfortable in that position, okay? And that's off-ice training because it's habits, it's mechanics, and you can spend two to three hours working on that off-ice and you just can't replicate that on the ice, okay? So again, freehockeyworkout.com, we can help you. You can come up with your own drills. Check out our YouTube channel. We have a bunch of stuff on there for off-ice drills. Okay, do whatever. Then getting into the stride leg and the drive leg, and that's you know the next key, which is a lot of people think when you have a short stride, it's because your stride leg that's going back isn't going back far enough. But really, it's the opposite. What's happening is you're putting your drive leg down too soon. You're not driving all the way up in front of your body. Okay, You want that drive leg and that drive knee to come all the way up. It should be coming all the way up and you shouldn't be setting it down until it gets in front of your body in a perfect 90 degree position. So that means a 90 degree position is your thigh should be going straight out at 90 degrees parallel to the ice and then your uh, your shin should be going straight down and, and that's when the leg is perfectly in front of you. Okay. So you can just Google, you know, NHL stride, NHL perfect hockey stride. I don't know, Google something and go to Google images and look at some of those still shots of players who have that drive leg perfectly out in front of them and that stride legs perfectly extended back, okay? And you can just see those pictures and that's what you wanna get to, all right? So what happens is you put that, you put that drive leg down too early and that forces Okay, when you put it down, you gotta start now extending it back and it becomes your stride leg. As soon as you stead it down, it now becomes your stride leg and that forces your stride leg to start coming forward. So if it hasn't fully extended yet, it's gotta stop where it's at and come forward. So if your drive leg comes forward further, you're gonna get more time for your uh, stride leg to extend back, all right? So work on that, think about that. Your drive leg, you need to focus on your knee bend and your drive leg, and your drive leg needs to come all the way forward. So here's what I want you to do. Okay, first, if um, I want you to have somebody film you, a parent, uh, another player, a coach, something like that, just spend two to three minutes before practice and two to three minutes after practice. That's all you need every single day, every single time you have practice or whatever. If you can get other ice, if you can find open ice or anything like that, great. But all you need is two to three minutes before and after practice. First, you know, just go up and down, up the ice one time, full speed. Don't even think about your stride at all, okay? It's important you just go your natural stride like you're in a game. When you're in a game, you're not thinking about your skating, right? You're thinking about what you have to do, where you have to be, and that's why, you know, this stuff has to become habit. It can't just be, um, you know, something you do in practice and you think you're a good skater because you skate good in practice when you're focused on it because you need a game, you're not going to be thinking about it. It's got to be just your automatic muscle memory and your automatic uh, technique that's going to just take over. So do that one time up the ice, have somebody film you in your normal stride. All right. Next thing, I want you to go up the ice at 50% um, at 50% speed, but 100% of your power. So you're still focusing on explosive power, explosive knee drive, but your frequency isn't fast, okay? You're going slower with your stride frequency at 50%, but you're still driving the knee and over accentuating, okay? So you're really working on over accentuating, making it uncomfortable for how far you're driving that knee forward and how far you're driving that stride leg back. And you'll notice the further you drive that knee, the further back that leg, that stride leg goes. And you can even take that stride leg all the way back and you can even start to open up your hip a little bit. If you really have a good drive, you'll feel your hip start to open up a little bit. And that's when you know you're really at that full extension, okay? So drive leg, stride leg, 50% all the way down the ice, but still working on 100% of the push, okay? The drive and the push should still be at 100. The frequency is at 50. So go up and down 50. Okay, take a rest in between each one. You know, that should take you maybe a minute or so. Then go up and down at 75% frequency, still doing 100% drive and 100% um, 
100% drive and 100% uh, stride. And then I want you to go an acceleration. So you're starting at 50, going 50 up to maybe the blue line and then 75 between the blues and then go into 100 frequency when you get to the blue line in, okay, to the goal line, you're at 100% frequency, but you're still keeping the pr proper technique. So the overemphasizing the drive and the stride. So you might not be as fast as you usually are, right? Because you're way, way longer. So don't worry about if the frequency isn't there. Focus on the technique, and then the frequency will come later as you're doing more of the off-ice stuff, more of the quickness and the speed work and things like that. And that's why flexibility is so important too, all right? So that's your prescription. The off-ice training at Free Hockey Workout is available for you, freehockeyworkout.com. Get that um, you know, get that speed, that power, that strength, that explosiveness, because that's going to help you no matter what. And that's a really important part of it. You know, maybe the most important part of it. And then you're always working on improving those mechanics, and you can do that drill. And what's going to happen is you're just going to improve a little bit at a time. It's just going to make small, tiny improvements. You're not even really going to notice it. Your stride is just going to get a little bit longer every single week if you're doing this properly. If you're combining the off ice with the on ice, you're going to be making these small, tiny improvements. You won't even know. But then over the course of a month, three months, six months, now all of a sudden you're you know four, five, six inches longer in stride and you're starting to make these diff noticeable differences. They, they, they won't be noticeable to you because you're just making them in these tiny little improvements every single day. So it just feels like you're normal skating. But if you go back to the video, uh, you'll be able to see that you know there's going to be a big difference just in that very first time up and down the ice where you're just doing your natural stride, whatever feels the most comfortable to you. You're not getting out of your comfort zone that stride will start to look better a little bit at a time, okay? And what happens is that's the stride that you're actually bringing into the game with you. So these noticeable small differences, what's actually gonna transfer over into the game when you're not thinking about your skating, all right? So we're always working on getting that muscle memory and improving those habits. So that's how you improve your stride right there. That's my prescription. It's something that'll definitely help you out. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and video coaching. So if you want to send me your video and you want to have me look at your stride and help me, me kind of break it down and pause the video and compare it to other players and draw on it and show you exactly what I'm talking about with the stride length, the stride drive, and uh, the stride the stride <laughs> recovery. So if you want me to help you with all that, I can. Um, you know, you just send me your videos, I'll, you know, break it all up, show you, and we can do like on a monthly basis where, you know, we're making improvements every single month and I'm helping you focus on new things every single month. Be happy to do that for anyone that's watching the video that wants help with their skating. Um, that's something I do for a lot of players and I actually work with some players at a pretty high level on that because those guys are always trying to continue to improve their skating, okay? No matter what level you play at, you're always focused on improving your skating because again, you're just always trying to get that much better and in order to keep moving on, you have to keep improving your skating. Now, like what your coach said, if you don't improve your stride length, you're probably not going to play at the next level. I don't buy that, okay? The question is, is are you improving your game as a whole? Are you focused on improving and you know, if you're working on it, you're going to keep moving on, okay? If you're really working and focused and, you know, you're not, you're not kidding yourself, you're actually putting the time and the effort in and doing the right things, you're going to keep moving on to the next level, all right? So I hope that helps you out. Keep asking your questions at 247 Hockey Life on Facebook, at 247 Hockey Life on Twitter, um, at 247 Hockey Life on Instagram, you know, Vine, Snapchat. I don't even know what the heck all that crap is. But um, keep asking your questions, and we'll keep trying to answer them. Yeah, that's all we got for you today. All right, thanks for watching.